Good morning. Good morning, everybody. One moment. As Pandora's playing in my pocket. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah J. Man Manero with J. Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our global headquarters here in Rochester, New York with another wonderful 18 Fridays, Axie Experts, Anything Meaningful Fridays. We're continuing with our theme of realtor safety. It is Realtor Safety Month. Uh, it should be Realtor Safety Day every day. Uh, but we do welcome you every week. We're going to give you a little something with a different perspective. Uh, last week we had David Lagaz, excellent, uh, gave us some some wonderful tips on prospects or predators. Uh, if you didn't catch that, go back and watch the replay. It's on the Facebook that you're on right now watching this, or you can catch it on the YouTube. But today we have a special guest who I talked to during the week about her safety tips from a different perspective. But let me let her introduce herself. Brittany Matad is here. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you for being here today. Let's give you a round of applause. Uh, we, we appreciate you taking time out of your day and talking to us about safety. Why don't you kind of introduce yourself, where you're from, and what we're going to be talking about today. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brittany Matat. I am from rural upstate New York, real upstate, like not just a little bit above the city. You go all the way to Canada, you come back to about 10 miles and you've made it to me. Uh, I live in a huge county with a very small amount of people. There's a lot of rural properties and I am a practicing realtor. Uh, and so I want to talk to you about safety from my perspective, not just a female perspective, but a rural safety perspective as well. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, actually, like when we watch a lot of these watch or we sit in class and we hear all these safety tips, it's always like working with buyers, working with buyers, working with buyers. And in a seller's market, like we're all low on inventory still all across the nation. Somebody calls and says, I want to list my house. You're not going to go, hold on. I need your license. Wait, wait a second. So like, l let's get right into that. Like uh, from a... Working with sellers, what, where do we begin? So one thing that I try and talk with other realtors about is exactly what you just said, thinking about it from a seller's perspective. There is no pre-qualification for sellers. One thing we always say is get their pre-qualification as a buyer because then you know, you'll know they're serious. Well, how do you know a seller is serious? And in a low inventory market, if you get a call or a text that says, come to this address, I wanna list my house, you're gone, you're out the door, you haven't even thought about it, you are just headed to that place and you're about to step into their territory, you're about to step into their home and could that be a trap, could that be a lure? That's something that I think we all need to be mindful of. Don't let your guard down just because it's not a buyer because it's a seller and there's that potential listing on the line. So right. when we talk about uh, that and being aware, one thing that we always hear when it's a buyer is you arrive at the property early. Well, if it's a seller's home, they're probably there when you get there. So <laughs> getting there early right. is not really going to help you. Um, so we kind of have to think about it from a different way. Yeah, like maybe get there before they get up. Or yeah. no, <laughs> and just go around the house with a flashlight in the windows. No, and then they're going to be calling the police on you. That's like, the reverse hey, of what I you want to wake up. Happen. I'm here. I'm here for my appointment. Yeah. I know it's not till two o'clock this afternoon, but I figured I would check it out and make sure you didn't have any murder stations throughout the house or something. It's, I mean, it's so, it is so crazy to think like, we'll we'll hop on in a moment's notice. If somebody called me today and wanted to list their house, I'd probably be there within 30 minutes if I had the time. So what, yes. what are some first steps? What do we do first? Do we want to, do you want to share your screen to kind of show them some of the stuff or? Yeah, let's take a look at that and we can okay. kind of talk through it as we're going through it. So situational awareness applies in any circumstance in your life, but especially when you are getting there to list a property, you want to be very aware of your surroundings. One thing that I try and do is drive by the house, turn around and go back. I want to know where the neighbors are. You know, how far, if I'm on a back road, which I often am, how far away am I from the main road? What is going to be my best way if I have to get out of here? What's my cell phone reception like? Um, and I'm mindful of all those things. So I'm still arriving early, but I'm not pulling in the driveway early. So that's uh, one thing that it can be a little bit different. It allows me to just take a breath and be aware of my surroundings. Uh, and especially if you're new, there's a lot of new realtors 
coming into the market and you may be in areas that you're not familiar with. Maybe you've never been to this part of your market and you're going to list a property there for the first time. Do you know, you know what the fastest ways out are? What's your cell phone reception like? Those types of things. So I start by doing that. Then um, same thing, you know, don't block yourself into the driveway. Obviously, the seller is probably already there when you arrive. So back in whenever possible, park on the street uh, whenever possible. On a back road, on a long driveway, that's probably not uh, going to be possible. So you are going to have to go down that driveway, but back in so that your vehicle uh, can be out. I also personally leave my keys in the car. I'm not worried about someone stealing my purse. I'm more worried that I can get out quickly. Uh, I have insurance to cover my vehicle, my personal belongings, but if I'm fumbling for my keys because they're in my pocket, uh, that seems like more of a risk to me. So that's uh, how I handle that. So we, we were, um, I was on a, on a clubhouse earlier this week. Shout out to, uh, to NARYPN on clubhouse. Cause they had a great, um, room on safety and i think it was kim swiner who was talking about uh drawing a blank while you're thinking of what you were going to say um oh no but putting into the listing as a listing agent guys yeah so thank you because we have folks from montana watching we have from illinois um new york all, like all over the country and i know montana there's definitely some rural areas even uh carrie joe little who's on uh she's on the outskirts of, of uh, far outskirts of Chicago where she's into some rural areas uh, sometimes too. But putting into the listing, is there cell phone service available like in the area? Like part of that, because if it's an hour away, you may not necessarily, it's not practical that you're going to go drive an hour just to see if there's cell service. But if it's in right. the listing, like, hey, cell phone service isn't great. Um, it's on a rural road far off and it's, you know, there's, only one way in, one way out. I think all of those are things that can be put into the private remarks from a listing agent perspective just to help us all be safe, right? Yes, I think those are very good suggestions. Uh, it certainly doesn't hurt to, to know what you're kind of walking into and be prepared uh, as possible for sure. So when, okay, so now you're at the property, you've backed your car in, you've done everything you're supposed to do, you knock on the door. What I usually suggest to do is uh, do your handshake. Uh, another thing that I teach is etiquette. Part of etiquette and protocol is a proper handshake. Uh, it's very simple. Extend your hand one, two, and take your hand back. Maintain your personal space. That's going to tell me right away what kind of a uh, person on the other end I'm going to deal with. Are they going to be someone who's going to respect my personal space? Or are they going to get into my personal space? Can and you, that's can you to, do the, to do the handshake right again so that we can, that's why I brought yep. you full screen. Can you? Okay, perfect. So you're going to face your person straight on, extend your hand parallel to the ground, shake one, two firmly and take your hand right back and put it in your own personal space. And a lot of times when I see people shake hands, they will just kind of put their hand out a little bit. Like they want to keep it. You want to extend your hand as far as you possibly can so that they don't have to come into your personal space to shake your hand because now you've just invited them into your personal space. And this is a professional relationship. I don't need you in my personal space. Forget about COVID, just in general. So by extending your hand as far as you can, they'll do the same. Or at least if you enter their space, you're going to take your hand right back and you're putting it in your personal space, put it down by your side or holding on to whatever's in your hands is fine. But you want to set that boundary right away. And it's subconscious. You don't have to say to them, don't enter my dance space. Like it's not dirty dancing. You don't have to say that right <laughs> off the bat, right? right. They're going to get the message uh, or they're not. And then you're going to know the type of um, person that you're dealing with. And so I would do you recommend person. like, are you going to go out first? Is that kind of a power play as well? Kind of asserts your authority. Like you bring it out. Absolutely. And you, okay. Yeah. So, and in the etiquette world, we say you're always at a social advantage by extending your hand first. Um, keep in mind that in the real estate situation, you are the professional. So it's important to um, not exactly from a power play stance, but just to be the professional in the scenario. You're you're wanting to make them comfortable. Yes, you're aware of your situation, but at the same time, like you're trying to list the house, right? You don't want to be right. like, you know, making it so you're going to lose the sale. So I do that. Uh, and then I try and get them to show me the outside first. And that's not something that you would necessarily think about. They want to show you the inside of the house. 
But if you start on the outside, then you still have your space. You still can get away if you have to. You can read the situation, read the body language of the seller, uh, and it'll kind of help you relax a little bit too. Because if, if you're like me and you're going to meet a stranger in their home in a rural environment, it's a little bit of anxiety. So starting outside allows you to have that space that you need and you're setting it on your terms. And you, again, you're the professional, you're in control. Give me a tour of the outside. Let's talk about the outside of the property. Let's talk about property lines. That's a great way to start that conversation and have them talk about boundaries with you. And in the meantime, you're listening to what they say, but you're also following a few of these cues, uh, watching their facial expressions. Are their pupils overly dilated? Uh, are they looking other places or are they fixated on you? If you're gesturing around to show me the property lines and they're not taking their eyes off of you, that may be a sign that something is not going correctly. Um, watching their upper body language. Are their shoulders back? Are their hands in their pockets? Are they relaxed? Uh, are they talking? You want to practice your active listening. Uh, and that's something that someone like me struggles with. I'm chatty. I love to talk. I love to tell people and like make it. small talk. I know, right? But practicing your active listening and let asking a question and letting them speak and not don't start speaking until they have completely finished, that will also help you gauge uh, the situation as well. Hold on and, before you move on. Go ahead. Um, if you could, there's a thing at the bottom there that says hide, hide the hide the screen. Yeah, thank you. That wasn't what I wanted to say, but that's just a video thing Driving for me. Uh, but it's a, such a great point that you're making, and, and I want to kind of reiterate it. For those of you who are in rural settings, like I see Britt Jasper, she's in Tennessee. She's like Memphis, Tennessee, but out, outside that area. Uh, Billy Parrott, she's in Billings, Montana. We have some other Montana folks as well, Leticia is in Illinois, Carrie Joy is in Illinois. Then we have a couple folks in the New York City, Queens area uh, watching. But to go outside, and, and I like that, formulate some questions in regards to the property, like where are the property lines? But then also like when you have outbuildings, like you may have in these rural, right? You have barns, you have absolutely all these, like mm -hmm. the, that would freak me out even more. Like I, I'm not going to go into the barn first. Like I want them, I've seen too many scary mm -hmm. movies where like, that's where all the murdering happens. Um, mm -hmm. Let them go in first and let them point out things. Like, could you ask them kind of open-ended questions? Is that where you're kind of getting a, a better vibe at that point? Yes, absolutely. Ask those open-ended questions. For me, uh, if it's a rural property, I always say, oh, I grew up on a farm. I love to know about the property itself. Let's start there. And to look, you know, we judge each other. To look at me, you would say, oh, she's not a farm girl. But I get that right out there as a, a leading question. And if they're a true serious seller, they're gonna love to show you. They're gonna love to show you their property, all the landscaping they've done. This is how much acreage I have. These are my outbuildings. These are my animals. Like, And that just has that open air conversation where if right. God forbid something is wrong, you can bolt and get out of there without starting in their basement. So it, in that scenario, you know you're headed to a property with some acreage. I don't imagine that you're wearing shoes. I mean, do you, do you carry like, um, well, I don't go barefoot. Well, I mean, do you have like <laughs> shit kickers or I, I don't know, muck boots, whatever you want to, what do you call them? Yes. Yeah. Part so my, I mean, language. yeah, well, part of, uh, our business is being aware of your clientele, being aware of where you're going. I always have a pair of rubber boots. They, they are coach, but I have a pair of rubber boots in my trunk. And uh, I'll course. put them on. Oh, yeah, I'll put them on before we go, you know, because if I show up in heels, as I often do, I don't want to offend them either. You know, I've done my research. I know what kind of property I'm coming to. It can be offensive to people uh, that way as well. So you want to dress for where you're going. And if you're going to be out walking in a field, uh, whether you are a gentleman or a lady in nice shoes, that's not appropriate. So always have a comfortable pair of boots in your car just to throw on. And what about winter time, right? I mean, where I live, we get a ton of snow. So I've got a spare pair of boots in the car at all times. These boots were made for walking, walking on the farm. You guys thought I was going to say that. That's for your Montana song. people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So what's next? What do we got next? Okay. So... 
as you're doing that walk around outside, you're listening to what they're saying, you're taking in all of the surroundings, but you're also watching their body language. Um, the third thing to look for is their feet planted apart. If they're not moving or walking around the property, you're kind of leading and they're not following. Or if they're in your personal space and they're not you know, giving you your room, uh, that is something to just be aware of, a red flag as well. Um, you can kind of see the difference in the the drawing, the illustration at the bottom. A fidgeting person who is nervous. Uh, some people are just like that when they meet new people. And, you know, that doesn't mean you should bolt from the listing appointment and turn down the listing. These are just things to kind of be aware of and um, to either help relax you or, or tell you to put your guard up and be more aware of your surroundings. So best practices for me ahead of time. Uh, we talked about when you're actually at the property, but I would also say uh, match names to the tax records and deeds or any other resource, the name that they give you on the phone. There have been circumstances in my market. It's happened to me. It's happened to other realtors where somebody will call and the name they give you is not the name of the owner of the property. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, doing that just for time purposes more than anything. Um, schedule your appointment during daylight hours as the days get shorter, that gets harder. But if it's somebody you don't know, really try and schedule that during the daylight hours, even if it means you have to do it on a Sunday afternoon. I'd rather sacrifice my Sunday afternoon than go to a stranger's house at dark on a Tuesday night. Right. Um, always use social media. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, um, when the names don't, and just give people a quick tech tip, if you're not using RPR, um, because I like tax records in some of our counties throughout the country are not as updated as they should be. Uh, but RPR is a great resource. And for those of you who are in non-disclosure states like Montana, um, they don't disclose all of their information in the sales, but the realtors do have access to other systems. What do you do if it doesn't match? Let's, let's just talk about that. I mean, I think that's important to bring that up before you ever go over there, right? Absolutely. So I pick up the phone and call them and say, Hey, I'm getting prepared for our appointment that if they are shows a serious seller shows them that you're a true professional and you're not just going to wing this. So, Hey, I'm preparing for our appointment and I'm, I'm a little perplexed. I'm wondering if you can help me because I've pulled everything up, but it's coming up under a different name. Is there someone else that's a co-owner of the property or did you take ownership recently and I'm missing it? And having that conversation is very valuable. I've done that before. And, and one time had a guy say, well, I don't own the house. Um, a friend of mine owns the house. Well, I need to talk to your friend. Right. I can't, you know, right. right. I mean, you can't make any decisions, buddy. Exactly. You can't, you know, so we can work through that stuff ahead of time. And it also is going to be a time saver because in the case of the friend, you know, he was trying to help his buddy, but his buddy wasn't serious about selling. So why am I even going to take my time to go to the property, uh, and, and do that? Well, so from a safety perspective. even if it's like, uh, in a state, I've had that happen before where the, the kids or the, you know, who, whoever's handling the estate, the, um, executor or executrix, mm -hmm. uh, you know, calls me and it hasn't updated yet. Then it's, you know, there's other questions that need to be asked. Has the will been probated? All of the things that are may lead to like, you can't list it now. You may list it six months from now, depending on, on, you know, your state rules in, in your state. So save yourself the yes. time. Great points. Yep. That's all very good. And always, you know, trust your gut. Uh, you know, I know sometimes we discuss the buddy system, bringing someone with you. Uh, I personally am not a huge fan of the buddy system. I don't find it effective if, if two of us get captive and killed at the same time. But mm -hmm. I understand the theory behind it. Always let someone know where you're going. Even if it's last minute, shoot your broker a text, shoot your manager a text and say, hey, running or your teammate, if you're on a team, I'm running out to do this listing appointment. They just called earlier this morning. Here's where I'm going to be. Uh, shared Google calendars are also a great thing. We do that in my office so that we kind of know where the other ones are. And, well, and there's there's even valuable. now if you're using Supra in your market, I'm sure CenturyLock has something similar, but Supra has a safety feature where you can put a timer on there and say, mm -hmm. if I'm unlocking this lockbox, if you don't hear from me in 30 minutes, set off an alarm that can alert somebody. Um, so at yeah. least then it's That's like- That's valuable. 
Yeah. Yeah. Something, something more. You Even do. my Apple watch, my Apple watch has fall detection. So if I were to be pushed to the ground and that's something I'm aware of, if I feel like I'm in danger, you know, maybe I fall to the ground and activate that. It will call the police from my watch. There's all kinds of different systems. Really? There's Invisaware. Yeah. There's Invisaware. There's, um, Guard Llama was a product I had for a while. That was like a push button thing that would um, send the police your location and dispatch them to you. So there's there's all different products out there. Do your own research uh, and find what you're comfortable yeah. with. But there's and we, definitely we, options. We had talked with Forewarn. They're they're another company that yeah. will verify somebody's identity based on their social mm -hmm. presence, like you say, Google and social media. But then Dave Lagaz brought up last week, like sometimes people have no criminal record because they've never been caught. So still look for the warning signs. Right. right. doesn't mean that they're not a criminal. There's fake profiles all over the internet. And in, at least in my market, I find there's a lot of amazing upstanding citizens that don't have social media. It doesn't mean they're serial killers. They just don't have a yeah. social media presence. You know? I don't do so... that Facebook stuff. Son. <laughs> right. Exactly. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that kind of uh, covers my tips for for sellers. Again, just being aware, maintaining your personal space is a big thing, and start out. Hold on, before we get to can. online security, because um, I know we have yes. roughly seven minutes where you're gonna tell me you have to go. But the um, <laughs> what's the what's the best way without running out of the house? Because I I feel like I'll bring it back here to to this this view here without running out of the house. Like if you see these warning signs and, and like your your meter's going off and your gut's saying, get the hell out of this house. How can we do that? Because we want to do error on the side of caution, not just ah, push the guy out of the way and then like run to your car. And then maybe they were just like socially right. awkward, you know, or they got ADHD right. like me. And that's why I'm fidgeting all the freaking time. Um, how do you make that exit professionally without setting off any kind of alarms where he's going to trigger some trap or something? Yeah. So you can't bolt every time the hair on the back of your neck stands up, especially if you're a person like me, because I would never sell real estate. I'm just, that's how I am as a person. There are ways that I have found to get out of situations that feel uncomfortable. Um, perhaps, you know, I'm not a fan of like the fake emergency on the phone. Um, I tend to say more, I do have to get to my next appointment. I want to look at the numbers. I'll be happy to get back to you. Would you like to schedule a time to come to the office? We can discuss this further. Uh, can I call you later today? Can I call you tomorrow? Just do whatever you say you're going to do, because if they are a legit seller, you don't want to ruin your professional reputation because you got the heebie-jeebies, you know? Right. Um, so it's important to find that balance. Um, I never think it's a good idea to put yourself in danger just to get a listing, but you also don't want to turn down every listing that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up because that's not a good business model in real estate. Well, and, and maybe even if you feel uncomfortable, like you could always bring somebody in from the office and co-list it with sure. them or just refer it to them. There's been people that I meet on a listing presentation. I'm like, not that mm -hmm. this guy gives me the heebie-jeebies, but this guy's going to drive me nuts. Yeah, <laughs> you know? we're just not a good like, fit. It's like a, I don't always do well with engineer personality types. And I'm like, ah, right at the beginning. I'm like, I'm going to refer this <laughs> yep. guy or I'm going to co-list somebody to help deliver mm -hmm. the best level of service because not all personalities yep. um, work together as good as they can. All right, let's get to yeah, online security. Yeah, that's the great way to pitch it to the seller. Like I'm not giving you the handoff. I just think you're going to get better service from my coworker. Or my yeah. Like here's or somebody from our team um, who right. I feel will deliver exceptional service. Even if you don't formally have a team, anybody that's in my office that I'm going to refer them to, we're all part of the team. Even if it's somebody in another that's office, right? right? Yeah. I mean, we're part of the real estate that's team. Right. I don't care where you're from. That's right. Um, okay, so online security. Uh, by now, in 2021, we should all be aware that online security is something that is a real serious thing. Um, I always suggest having a backup of your information. That backup should not be on your computer. <laughs> that defeats the purpose of the backup. So there are websites, you would be surprised, a number of people that think that, that it's okay to just make a copy on a folder on your computer. Uh, there are websites like Carbonite, uh, Norton has something, McAfee has something, there's all different programs. Just choose one, just put it in a line item as you're in your business plan, in your budget, spend what's, the money, it's worth it. What's the cost? 
Roughly. Uh, it depends on It'd the, like the company. They're usually hundred bucks a year and a place like Carbonite is going to automatically back up every night. Um, I personally use OneDrive. It's built into Microsoft. I'm a Microsoft fan and I buy the extra storage and it's like a hundred bucks a year and everything's backed up all the time because at the end of the day, when you have electronic signature files, your electronic filing cabinet, whatever you have, you want it to be encrypted and you want it to be safe and backed up. So that if you ever had your computer held ransom, um, and for those of you that don't know what that means, it's like a scary message like this that pops up and says, we have all your stuff and we're not going to give it back to you until you give us money. And I don't negotiate with terrorists. So if that happens, you can take my files. You can delete them because you can't do anything with them anyway. Everything's on the cloud. They're of no use to you. And I can completely wipe out my computer, put a brand new version of Windows on my computer and download everything encrypted from my cloud. And I haven't paid a dime to someone who's trying to hold my computer ransom. There's no reason you should ever have to pay that if you have things backed up and held safely on an encrypted site. Yeah. I mean, studies have shown when, when we teach this, we teach this in the ePro class that if you pay it, then they're going to go, we got a sucker here. And then they're going to be like, mm -hmm. well, you know what? We need a little bit more money now and try to see how much more money they can get out of you. And, and you probably won't even get it back at the, at the end of all that. That's right. And how safe is it? If they got, if they were able to get it once, they're going to be able to get it again. It's better to just wipe out your computer, put a brand new version of windows and just reload your information. That's how, I mean, I dropped my computer one day, like from a long ways down and it smashed into a million pieces. And all I had to do was go buy another computer and upload my electronic filing cabinet sites and everything was there encrypted. So it's just a good practice so that you're not out of business and your client's information is held securely and you don't have to make the dreaded phone call to say, you know, my computer has been compromised and you know, I've, I've lost some of your information. So, um, the other thing that we, I wanted to talk about real quick, if we have a couple steps. minutes, Jeremiah, I mean, you know, we have like my action we, steps. Yeah. I love see this, how I'm distracted. I'm like, yeah, action step. I wish I was in that doom buggy. Um, but yeah, we, we have as much time as, as you would like. Okay. I just wanted to talk real quick about video tours and virtual tours. So in the age of COVID, a lot of us are doing properties virtually. So you're going to someone's home, it's listed for sale, and maybe you're just taking a video of it for your buyers and your buyers aren't with you. That's not the time to let your guard down because you don't know who could come into the property. The seller could come home. Maybe the seller's not a good person. Someone else could stumble into the property. So just a couple of quick tips. What I do when I have to do a video and I'm by myself, uh, I start, you know, in the house, I make sure that uh, I am familiar with the surroundings. I start in the scarier areas first, the basement, the attic, whatever that looks like for you. Um, again, back your car in. Don't let your guard down just because you're there by yourself and you're not meeting someone. Uh, there was a member of mine that uh, was doing a virtual tour in a basement and the seller came home and the seller wasn't a nice person and um, tried to trap her in that basement. So wow. just be mindful of, of that. Just because you're alone doesn't mean that you're should let all of your safety things go out the window. Yeah. And you, you got us excited when you started talking about video. Uh, what we like to do is like, we'll get there early. Cause it, I did five of these this week for a, a buyer moving from long Island to Rochester and get there early. I unlock everything, all of the doors. Yes. Cause I'm going to go and, and then I plan my route. Right. So I un unlock Me all the too. doors. I turn on all the lights and then I say, okay, I'm going to go from the front door to, 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 and I plan my route. And then I also know if something happens, where's my escape? Like, how can right. I escape? Are there multiple ways to escape? Because this is a house you've never been in before. You don't know the floor plan or yeah. anything like that. And then I do my video. Uh, but always, right. and always be, yeah, always be mindful. I think that's a great tip because you don't know if someone's in the house. I mean, if you just walk in the front door, assume nobody's home and start videoing, you're talking to your screen, you're talking to your phone, you're totally focused Definitely on distracted. that. If, if, if you're distracted and what if somebody is somewhere, what if you're catching them off guard, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, we do our best as realtors to communicate and let you know whether somebody's going to be home. Tenants are a whole nother thing in my market. Tenants don't like to leave for showings. They don't want to, they don't want right. to be put out. So sometimes they're home. Sometimes they're doing things maybe they shouldn't be doing and they don't want me to see that. So they definitely don't want me to be videoing it. 
And <laughs> when when people feel this threatened, they'll do point. things. Right. When people feel threatened, they'll do things they wouldn't normally do. So I always, you know, just like you said, unlock every door, walk in every room, turn every light on. If somebody is there, obviously introduce myself, tell them what I'm going to be taking a video. Did you know I was coming? You know, that kind of thing and make sure they're comfortable uh, because you just don't know what you could be walking into. Sometimes the pictures of the house look vacant online and you get there and somebody lives there. And be sure I would maybe check with the listing agent. <laughs> Some There's been cases where people just have moved in and squatted on a property. Yeah. Um, that that was sitting there, meant to let the listing. Hey, did you know that people are living there? Oh yeah, yeah. We just took it when when we were vacant. Now it's rented. But in right. in regards to because this has happened to me with tenants because it was such a good point there. Uh, marijuana is not legal, decriminalized. Would we say in New York State, right? Decriminalized. Decriminalized. Um, and so they could give give a crap about what's going on. I, I went to show one property and it was like a Dr. Dre video, like smoke literally came out the front door. Yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm like yo guys, <laughs> did you know I was coming? They're like, yeah, what do I give a shit? Like, you know, you're right. And I'm like, okay. Um, but if you're going to do a video, then that's where I would walk through first because I had one and I'm not even lying. My photographer said to me, he goes, dude, I've never had to Photoshop so much weed out of my photos in my entire life. <laughs> and I'm like, cause the person right. had like, like, buds in every single room which is okay now but if you want to put your property in its best light possible like like hey i'm doing a video i'm i'm no snitch i'm not gonna I'm, there's nothing i'm gonna do here but if you have anything that shouldn't be on video could you take care of it i don't even want to know what it is don't tell me just go take care of it and and we'll we'll get mm -hmm. this done um, yep, absolutely. And I always tell, I always tell the listing agent, my buyers will not physically be with me. And I, do I have the seller's permission to video the property? I find it's not so much a problem when it's a seller, but when there's a tenant, because that probably didn't get communicated to the tenant, they got the lowest level of communication that someone's right. coming at four 30. So when I show up at four 30, it's just me and I'm ready to take a video of the inside of their apartment. They may not love that idea. And we need to have a conversation about it because I don't want them to feel threatened and then act against me, you know, in the heat of the moment. Like it's not premeditated. They didn't lure me to that place, right. but in the heat of the moment, they're afraid. I don't want something bad to happen in that circumstance either. So communication is key and, you know, just make sure you're letting everybody know what we're doing and, and different States have different laws on what you can video with permission and what you can't make sure you know what they are and you know, you're following everything. Yeah, I know somebody told me this when I first started in real estate, and I feel like it's worth sharing because I did it the other day, and my son was my son was with me, and he's like, "Why are you? Why do you do that with every house?" I open the door and I go, "Realtor!" like real loud, just to announce my presence. Like an That's a great agent, idea, right? And, and just in case if there is somebody hiding, or somebody's in the bathroom, or somebody's in the shower, or somebody didn't hear that we were coming. It's been that way. Yep. I've yeah, had just, that. Just Walked in on people presence. sleeping. Yeah, I walked in on a, somebody was in the, sh like we walked in, they weren't supposed to be here and I hear, yeah. oh my gosh, that's, that's a shower. Ugh. I was like, let's go, let's go, let's get out of here. We, <laughs> I left with the buyer and I, and then I called the agent like, yo man, I think your seller, did they, you sure they confirmed? Cause somebody's in the shower and mm -hmm. uh, sure enough, they, they didn't get the message. And yeah. Thank so, the Lord. They somebody's were, they daughter were or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank the Lord. They were still in the shower and not like just coming out of it or something I'm like, Oh, I can't unsee that stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah. If but, there's cars in the driveway, if it seems like somebody might be home, I will always try and like, you know, hello, anybody home, you know, realtor is a great idea. I'm definitely going to use that. And then as we're continuing to talk, I'm talking loudly. I'm not trying to speak quietly to my, I want them to know, you know, or even I'll say to my people, you guys wait out here. I'm just going to run through real quick and make sure that, you know, everybody's out and and they know that we're here because I don't want to go upstairs and find somebody like walking around naked or something that would be right horrible. well we've back in the day I'm gonna say back in the day but when HUD um, when the HUD keys were all over the place like everybody had a copy of a HUD key and the offices used mm -hmm. to keep them we'd find people in the properties all the time like yeah. somebody gave the code or they had their own HUD keys like random strangers they were looking through and I walk in and be That's like scary. uh sir uh where's your agent yeah. oh oh he's on his way yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to have to ask you to leave if you could and then wait for them outside. I don't yeah. know who you are. No offense. but any, Or any... The, Craigslist, the Craigslist scams with renters. We had a, a rash of that in our market. Yeah, um, 
and people were moving into houses and we would go to show it and there's whole families living in a house and you know it's unfortunate for them they got completely scammed but you know again when people feel threatened they do things they wouldn't usually do and you're walking into their home so just always be mindful just because the pictures make the house look empty doesn't mean it's empty well Brittany, we want to thank you i'm going to give you a crowd cheer now Thank you for uh, taking time out of your day. Thank you. Uh, My pleasure. We'll put, could we put like maybe your contact information in the comments or something if somebody wants Absolutely. to. So you, you teach, uh, you teach safety, obviously talk a little bit about the classes that you teach. The etiquette one I feel like is, is a lost art that nobody is teaching right now. So talk a little bit about what you teach. Um, and then we'll close out the show. So etiquette is really a passion project of mine. A very good friend of mine was an etiquette and protocol consultant. And when she retired, I took over her business. Uh, I teach realtor etiquette, but I also teach etiquette in general, cocktail party etiquette. You would be surprised uh, how uncomfortable people are. People, people are in social situations. And part of what I teach is how to be comfortable, how to make others feel comfortable, uh, I teach fine dining etiquette. Uh, I can do it in a group setting. I can do it in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Cocktail etiquette is my favorite. Uh, you know, how to hold your napkin, how to prepare your plate, how to keep your hand free for shaking, where your name tag should go. All those little things make a difference. And yeah. uh, I also have a specific realtor's etiquette class just because I feel like you want to talk about a lost art. Uh, I think that is a lost art among professionals, realtor etiquette and, you know, how to schedule showings and should you take your shoes off and all of those customary things. Uh, I teach that, but I also have a full line of uh, real estate classes. I have a class on deeds and surveys, how they relate to real estate. I have a communications course, um, a couple of different classes called can the buyer's agent do that? Can the seller's agent do that? Cause a lot of my members will call me and say, da, 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 this just happened. Can they do that? And that literally <laughs> turned into a class because I was like, well, you know, sometimes it's yes and sometimes it's no, but that literally turned into a class for me because I just feel like that's what happens. And there are so many different things we have to know in real estate and working together and providing that professionalism is so important to me. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. And thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, again, contact Brittany. I, her etiquette class is excellent. One of the things she talks about is like not filling your plate at the cocktail. I'm usually starving at a conference by the time the cocktail hour hits and I'm the guy that's got my plate full. I'm like, why do you got small plates? I'm hungry. What are we doing here? And she talks about all that. So it re really is. Um, it's not your last meal. That's, what, not, that's my right? famous it's, line. It's, it's not your last meal. Oh, uh, it's not your last meal, but thank you for tuning in again. Another realtor safety week. Uh, a little bit different than last week. Next week, we're going to do Realtor Safety and the week after that. So all, all month long, uh, four different presenters, four different perspectives. Uh, we want you to stay safe out there. But tune in every Friday, 18 Friday, Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Fridays. And then on Tuesdays, we have the Much to Say About Nothing podcast with Dr. Jeffrey Scott Stanton, where we talk a whole bunch about nothing and whatever else you want to bring up. So this is Jeremiah J. Manero. I can't leave you yet without one of these. All right. Uh, so make it a great day and thanks for tuning in.